Hello guys, Imanuel here. Today, I want to talk about the new Substance Painter Lightning Form model. This is the first iteration of the new Python-based plugins from Substance Painter, and also is the first version that supports the new UDIN workflow. Since the adopting fully changed how exports and plugins work inside Painter, I had to do some major changes, so the way it works is a little different from the previous versions. Still, I try to keep it simple and as similar as possible to how it has worked so far. Also consider that there are still some limitations for Python plugins, the main one being that you cannot export geometry from Painter yet. Hopefully, this will be added soon enough by the adopt team. So let's get started. From the Gumroad page, download the zip of the version 2.1.8 or greater and extract it. Inside, you'll find a folder called Shall Spill Link. Copy it and paste it in the Python plugin folder from Painter. Locate it in your documents, algorithmic, substance painter, Python, plugins. Please make sure you're using this path, otherwise, it won't work. Then open Painter. If you install the plugin correctly, you will either see the icon of the live link on the right side of the UI or the window already docked somewhere in the UI. If you don't see the plugin, check you have enabled it in the Painter Python menu. Now we need to verify the license and install the model client. To verify the license, open the plugin and go to the configuration tab. Paste your license in the key field and click verify. If successful, the email will be filled and a success message will appear in the log. Now to install the model client, select the version and this will automatically set the recommended path. In my case, I will select 14 and click the Install button. We now can see a success message appear in the log to inform us that the client was installed correctly. We can verify it by clicking the folder button and a new folder called Shell Splink has been created. To finalize the installation, now we need to check it is working. So we open Modo and we should be able to see the kit icon button. We click it and a new window will appear. Instead of checking every field of the plugin, I think it's better to see how it works in an HR workflow. Let's open Modo and Painter. In order to connect them, you need to open the plugin window in Modo. And as soon as you open it, the apps will be connected. And when you close it, it will be disconnected. In Painter, we can see the ID of the Painter instance, the available apps, in this case only Modo is available, the available renders for the app, in Modo we are talking about V-Ray, the Modo standard, Unreal and Unity, and the presets for each render. And on Modo we can see the instance ID and the available Painter instances. As you can see, each other's IDs match. Once you select the render and the presets, all the available maps for that preset will appear in the channels tab. The maps that are shown in the main section are the basic maps needed for a PBR material, and the ones in the optional can be used depending on the material, for example, emissive and opacity. Let's begin by sending a geo for a model to Painter. All we need to do is decide the normal map to be used, the initial resolution, the tangent space, if we want to include cameras, and the workflow, either default or UDIMS. Now we select the geo and click Send. If we have not opened a project in Painter, a new project will be created. If something is open already, Depending on what we have in the general section of the configuration tab, it can either do nothing and inform of an error in the log, or automatically close the current project and open a new one. Now with the Geon Painter, let's add this lava material and enable the emissive map. Next, we need to decide how we want to export the maps. First, we select the render, in this case, model, and the preset standard since I'm not using UDIPs. Then we select the output path. If you have not selected anything yet, the default export path from Algorithmic will be selected. Then the format and the bit depth, the base size of all the maps, the padding and the dilation if necessary. These settings will be the default settings to be used by all the texture sets. But thanks to the new export system of Painter, we can add some extra configurations. To add these extra configurations, we add rules. For example, this rule is of type format and is changing the image bit of the normal map from 8 to 16. We can add as many rules as we want with the plus button, and they can be applied at UDIM level, at map level, or at texture set level. And the rules can change the image format, the size, and the padding. Once you have configured everything, we can just click the save button to keep the configuration even if we close Painter. Finally, we select the sets we want to export and click send. As you can see, the material was created. Let's start the render. And all is working as expected. Well, that's all for now. 
I'll do an extra video explaining UDIMs, the differentiator networks, and how the rules work. So don't forget to subscribe. Good luck!